turn that off so I ain't yelling. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Listen, now, like I told y'all, I got my girl Kiwana Eaton coming on to talk about starting a business. And sis is a wealth of knowledge. Do y'all understand me? So if you do not have your pen and a pad ready, I'm telling y'all. So I'm about to end. Let me go ahead and bring my sis in real quick because she is the business. Oh, hey, boo. Hey, Kiwana, you might have to, uh, hold on. I think you actually have to request to come on to the live. But yes, get y'all, while we're waiting on her to join, get that pen, get that paper. I'm talking about everything business related that you want to know. If you are ready to start a business, oh, this is where you need to be. If you already have a business, this is where you need to be. Like I'm telling you that when I say sis has so much knowledge, I mean, it. come on now, just, just knowledge, just for no damn reason. Just, just, just smart. So we gonna wait on her for a second. But until then, how everybody doing? How's everybody Friday going? Um, I think you actually have to go live yourself and then hit like the little dual live thing icon in the left. And at that point, my picture will show and you send the request that way. But how's everybody doing this e this lovely Friday evening? How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's hot here where I like it's hot, like I don't like it. It's hot here. But yeah, so y'all got to get that pen and that paper ready because I'm telling you. It's about to go down. Good evening, Quite Exquisites. How are you doing, darling? Y'all got to go check out her boutique. She has some beautiful items in her boutique. Y'all got to go check it out. I love it. I love my little uh, my little orange outfit. All right, here we go, Kiwana. Hey! I'm so excited. I am so excited for this. Do you understand me? Like, yeah, me too. Like, hey, everybody. This is, this is definitely, this is going to be good. I told them get that pen. Get that paper oh. ready because you about to drop some knowledge on some folk. And if they miss Whatever it, they huh, like this is crazy. But in case y'all have to miss it, you can check it out on my YouTube because I am going to upload this on my YouTube with your permission. I don't like to put anything up if, if you know a person don't want it up there. So as long as I have your permission, I'm going to put this on YouTube for them because these jewels, baby, they better pick them up. Whatever you need to do, and anything anybody want to know, so go ahead and ask y'all questions. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, well, let me go ahead and start. Like, number one, okay. you have, like, when it comes to, like, starting a business, you know, be it a boutique, shootique, private labeling, like, how did you become, like, what made you decide to want to become so knowledgeable in that area? You know, because there are not a lot of people that are. So what made you decide to say, you know what, let me figure this out so I can help other people? You know what? I, I'm a life learner. I just like to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I have always been in school. So I went to my bachelor's degree is in business. And then my master's degree is in supply chain management, working with manufacturers and stuff. So I started learning how to work with suppliers and vendors while I was in the Navy, which is where I started having like different business ideas and stuff. So once I got out, I, I started a shoe company and I had found manufacturers and um, vendors while I was still in the Navy and on the other side of the world. So when I got back out, that's how I already had vendors and stuff. Well, I couldn't figure out like how to get everything connected and get it launched and all of that stuff. So I went back to school and started taking all these courses and all of that stuff. Well, I ended up having so much information and stuff and we were being successful with our own shoe team that inside of my city, people started asking me to help them launch their own business and stuff like that. So I got my first contract with my local career center and started teaching their business classes and stuff. So that's how I've been. <laughs> that's how I've been doing. That's what ended up making. I'm a teacher by. I'm a teacher and a life learner just by nature. Just by. Listen, I'm telling you what. When you, I, I'm. We hooked up at the perfect time because when I get questions and I'm like, wait, 
I don't know everything. And I never claim to know everything. I'd be like, if I don't know, I got to find somebody and refer somebody. So when I tell you that you came at the perfect time, because, I mean, I have so many people that will inbox me and say, well, I want to start a business, but I don't know where to start. And I'm yeah. like, okay, well, I, I get that. Most people don't. So what would you suggest if somebody wanted to start a business, whatever kind of business it is, what are those first steps you think they should take? To me, is doing research. So first um, creating your vision for your business, like the big picture overall vision of what you see your business looking like, finding inspiration, whether it be somebody else's like a fashion nova size company or somebody on Pinterest, just finding different inspirations of how you want your vision to look for yourself, the big picture goal. Of course, we got to backtrack and then work our way up to that big picture. But then if you break it down into smaller details, that's your business plan. Okay. That, that makes perfect sense. So let's just break them down. So like with me, I'll start with myself. So, you know, with starting my boutique, which was, I had it before and I wasn't mm -hmm. ready to be a business owner when I did it the first time. And I can admit that I just was not ready, but now I'm ready. So I know like with you, you give jewels on like vendors, the best places to go, places to stay away from. Can you tell them a little bit about that? Okay. So I, I have always dealt with, initially dealt with U.S.-based vendors because I wanted my stuff fast. The mm -hmm. quality is just, the U.S. has different quality standards, and you can always just bet that the quality is going to be good. So I have also dealt with overseas vendors, but for people starting out, I have to, like, I've kind of built my platform on TikTok based on teaching people how to work with different manufacturers from Alibaba. So um, it's different when you work with manufacturers from, from overseas versus the U.S. because overseas they don't have quality standards like we have. And then you're not there or you don't have a person that's there to look at the, to be your quality assurance um, in the place of you. You don't get your, you don't get to see your stuff until it comes. But with the U.S., it's just different. Like they can see you, well, overseas can see you pictures too. But it's just different because we have a different standard of living and all mm -hmm. that stuff over here. So working with vendors, it just depends on what type of product. Like certain products you're not just going to get from the U.S. Like um, the knockoff purses and the knockoff shoes and stuff like that. All of that mostly comes from China. Right. And stuff. certain products you just have to go overseas to get. So it really depends on the type of product that you want in order for which vendor to work with. Okay. And I know you talk a lot about Alibaba. And a lot of people, you know, they go there. To you know, and you know, some people unfortunately get ripped off because they don't know what to look yeah. for, what to do. Can you tell, like, people, like, if you choose to, you know, to get go to a vendor on Alibaba, what is it that they should be looking for to make sure that that is actually a reputable vendor and you're not going to be ripped off? So the first page of Alibaba will have like the the item picture, and then it'll have a little bit of information about the company, such as um, how many years they've been in business with Alibaba. Um, whether they are verified, like a verified icon, um, whether they have trade assurance icon, and how much money they have made in transactions. I always look to see how much money they have made because that only show that also shows you um, if they like if other people have been buying from them, and that'll show you too about their reviews and how people like to deal with them. If they've been making millions of dollars, then they've been in business for a while, mm -hmm. and people are, are probably repeat customers of them. So look for their. Trade assurance. The trade assurance protects your product if something was to happen. Like sometimes, one time I got ripped off on Alibaba from some earrings, and um, I never received my product. And then when I did receive something in the mail, it was like some seeds that came from China, and I didn't order no seeds. So I think that that's what the vendor ended up sending me instead of sending me my earrings. Mm -hmm. So I had <laughs> I had trade assurance, and I requested um, Alibaba to escalate the situation, and they refunded me my money. Um, so have, make sure that they have trade assurance. Make sure that you're looking at the transactions, whether they have the icon for um, them being verified, because they have to go through a, a verification process through Alibaba as well. Not to just be on Alibaba, but to be verified. So okay. they can be on they can be on Alibaba and not be verified. So they'll have to go through an extra step to get verified. So I always look for the ones that have a verified icon and that have been in business for at least three years. Okay. Okay. And are there vendors that you look at and you say, you know, yeah, I've been, you know, I've worked. Are there vendors on Alibaba that you've worked with yourself that you're like, you know, I'm going to continue to work with them or that you've referred your clients to? Yeah, especially with shoes, particularly with shoes. And I have one clothing one because, you know, like with the sizes on Alibaba, it's kind of hard to tell if it's a U.S. based plus size yeah. or a. 
they're they're, right, they're, they're plus, they're, yeah, mm, I know. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I have a shoe manufacturer that I like, that I have been working with that one of my clients is creating her own shoe line with right now. And they are doing, I'm talking about, they got the best quality that I have ever seen. And do, these shoes look like, they probably cost like $15, but you can sell them for upwards of $400. They look good. That's how great the quality looks. Okay. So, yeah. All right. But I have, some, I have some that I'm like, I would never send nobody to them. Okay. Okay. Can you tell? Can you tell those who those? Hey, son, my son's on the live, and he's like, "Hi, mommy. Hi, baby." Um, <laughs> but can you tell us those vendors at least? So it's like, or a couple of them. So it's like, listen, stay away from these folks. Let me go on my phone. You know. Okay. So I I talked to them via um chat. I mean via WhatsApp as well as on chat on Alibaba. Uh -huh. So if I say WhatsApp, I don't know their name, but I'll find them on. Oh, um, yeah, WhatsApp. Yeah, 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 definitely. And is that how a lot of the vendors on Alibaba uh, communicate through WhatsApp? Or can can you also communicate with them through the app? Yeah, I, initially, I prefer to communicate with them um, via the app so that they can send me different pit product pictures and um, videos and stuff. But sometimes the product pictures I can't download to my phone from the app, so I'll get them to add me on WhatsApp so that I can download the product pictures and the, and the um, videos. But for the most part, they do communicate via WhatsApp. Um, and I like that they communicate via WhatsApp because I get them to give me a tour of their facility. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And will most of them do that, or is that just like something you have to request, or do they offer it, the tour? Um, I have had only two that offered it, and then the other people I asked them to, if they'll allow me to see it. Okay. I haven't had nobody to say no. Nobody has told me no. Okay. So I think your standard question, especially when you are trying to verify that they are legit or not. Right. And I know a lot of the vendors on Alibaba have like the MOQs. And a lot of people, of course, don't know what MOQ is. And I will admit, I was one of those people and I had to research what an MOQ was. But can you explain the MOQs and all of that for people that don't know what that is? Okay, so MOQ, is it stands for minimum order quantity. And there are two types of MOQs that uh, uh, Alibaba would have. Alibaba would have a uh, MOQ for if you just want to order just regular products. And then they'll have an MOQ if you wanted to order custom products. Um, so MOQ is the minimum order that you'll have to place in order to do business with that person, with that vendor. And are there, cause I know a lot of vendors want you to do at least 100. But are yeah. there, I mean, it's like, uh, I'm going to order 100 of a sample. I don't think I want to do that. So have you yeah. ran across any vendors that will say, well, you know, yeah, you can order five. You don't have to order 100. Or is that does that even... A possibility on Alibaba. Yeah, it is. You, it's actually you doing your research because it depends on. Okay, so it depends on what you're trying to order and if you're trying to do customization or not. If you're trying to do customization, then the MOQ will of course be higher, and that's when it comes into being a hundred pieces or something, mm -hmm. whatever product you're ordering. But if you're gonna order just like for yourself, of an outfit or a pair of shoes for yourself, then the MOQ can be one, two, up okay. to five, up to. But it, it can be lower. You just have to research different vendors. Um, oh, but it's, I forgot what I was just going to say. I lost my thought. Did you, <laughs> was it the second part of that question? Oh, no, it was just, you know, the, the MOQ. Like, oh. can I order just one or do it have to be? Or did you or there vendors that will say, you know, you only need to order five. That's the minimum MOQ if you're going to do samples. You know what I mean? Like. Oh. I was thinking. I was thinking about samples. Um, so for samples, you can or, you can order just one sample. Your sample will be a, a higher price than the uh, regular price that they have on the. Okay, say like if you're gonna order something, um, and you want to get it customized, mm -hmm. and you for customization, the MOQ is one hundred, and for one hundred, the price would be two dollars per item. Per, right. Okay. But if you want to, if you need to order a sample, they'll allow you to order one. But the sample will be eighty dollars. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The sample, sample will always be more expensive than the regular um, standard order. Okay, okay. Well, that makes perfect sense. So, guys, if y'all have any questions, please drop them in the comments. We want to answer. I want. Listen, I'm telling y'all now. For the time that we got, and make sure you go follow Kiwana. If you're not already following her, please make sure you go follow her because she. I'm telling you. The nuggets of knowledge that she dropped 
every day, not just now, every single day. I'm telling you, you can learn something from her every day. But if you have any questions, business related questions, please drop them in the comments. We want to answer as many as we possibly can. You know, it's Friday night. I know some of y'all trying to be grown. You know, we still in the panorama, <laughs> but it ain't as bad as it was. So <laughs> some people trying to go out and be grown. So, but yeah, drop them questions in the comments if y'all have anything. So, you okay. So, you know, <clears throat> I think my side, do you see questions on your side? I don't have, no, I don't you know. see your questions side. on your side. Yeah. I, if I have questions, okay. I'll ask you. Okay. Somebody asked, um, for a shoe vendor's name, um, do you want a? It's Ebony Moran Mandria. Do you want a vendor in the United States or uh, overseas? And Miss Mildred, you ask, what is the next step after you know what you want to do? Um, one, create your vision, like your business plan, and then two, identify your ideal customer. If you don't know who your ideal customer is, it'll be hard for you to pick. You'll end up picking products that will your your idea of who the customer is. Well, actually, you'll end up picking products that you want, but not products that your ideal customer wants. Yes. So identify who your ideal customer is first, and then pick your products, design your website, and do all of that. Like, I um, first, you know, your vision, then your ideal customer. Now, I have a question on my side from the Bag Lady okay. Lounge. So she says she's used Alibaba before, so she wants to know how to navigate the shipping costs. Okay. So for shipping costs, it's two different types of shipping. You get Air shipping and you get sea shipping. Air shipping takes seven to ten days and it's the most expensive type of shipping. Um, depending on what your product is, it also they also gonna charge you by the weight of the product. So not only do they charge you because Alibaba is in China and the distance, but it also goes by the weight and the speed of shipping. The second type of shipping is sea by sea. So by sea is the most ex least expensive, but it's the slowest. So it's supposed to take 30 to 45 days, but one of my clients, she just had some shoes um, to be shipped from Alibaba uh, from China and it got here. It got, it hasn't been delivered to her yet, but it got to the United States within like seven days. So now we're just waiting on the package to be delivered by FedEx. So and it's two types of shipping. Do the, is the stuff that go through uh, the sea and the air for that matter, since it's coming from China, is it all subject to customs to be checked by customs yep. or no? It's all, no matter how the shipping is, it's okay. It's subject to be checked, which can be make it delayed as well, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. And especially, and that's uh, that could be another reason why some people won't receive a product, not only it being delayed, but if it's like knockoff stuff and custom only in the United States catches and realize that it's knockoff, then they won't allow it in. So wow. that would be a reason it delayed and not received. Ooh, child. So y'all hear that now when we ban our knockoffs because I'm, uh, I, I will admit that I have done that. If you don't get it, <laughs> it didn't make it through customs. So <laughs> closet curtains on shipping. Okay, when we start with the next question that I see. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Let's get them. Let's let let's get them. Okay, it's, um, society complex says. Um, to do the private label is the best. Is it best to have an LLC or a resale license? So that depends on where you're sourcing from. If you're sourcing from a, a manufacturer that's overseas, they don't require they don't require that. Um, if you're sourcing from somebody in the United States, then yeah, they're going to require it. So it depends on who you're sur you're sourcing from. And let's talk about that, like the requirements for you know that you would need to be a wholesaler and to purchase wholesale items in the U.S versus another country because there are differences and I think people don't realize that like of course the yeah. U.S. requires more than these other countries do so let's talk about that like the different requirements for those okay so you know in the United States they're, they're going to require your um, your business license your resellers permit some of the vendors require a, um, a stock website or a picture of your storefront it just it depends on their requirements but they at minimum got are going to require a reseller's permit and reseller's permit vary by state because I'm in the state of Alabama and we don't we aren't we aren't required to have a reseller's mm -hmm. permit. So I work with like shoe vendors or clothing vendors, um really brands in the United States, uh, then I just send them a copy of my business license and my sales tax certificate. But for overseas, they not really they not studying any of that. They're not studying any of that. <laughs> 
They ain't studying none of that child. They just trying to make that coin, honey. They they just want them American dollars. I get, I get it. I understand it. Okay. I mean, and I know like here in Kentucky, because I'm in Kentucky, and when I have started working with um, particular vendors for my boutique, and they'll be like, you know, do you have your uh, resellers? And I'm like, Kentucky doesn't require us to have one. Like, they just don't. Now I have my business license. I can send you that. But, uh, you know, but some states so make sure you all are researching to see yep. if it is required in your state to have a reseller's license because some states do require it other states don't i just we both just happen to live in states in the south that don't require you to have yeah. a reseller's license a reseller certificate they all call them something different so yeah it wasn't, it wasn't until I started um, my group on Facebook and people from different states were joining my group and started asking about resellers for men. I was like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? It, I don't know what that is because, yeah, if you don't have to have it, why would you know what it is? Right. But it's, I mean, it's still good to know as well what it is. But, you know, if you don't have to have it, it's good to know whether or not your state requires it. So, yeah, and even if you're just an online business, like my business is going to start back up just solely online, but I know I can, all of the licensures and everything that I need in order to do that. They never expired anyway, but, you know, so, you know, you got to have all them ducks in the row, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm telling you, listen, Uncle Sam going to want his money, and if your ducks ain't in a row, child, you going to be owing Uncle Sam big time, okay? Yeah, so... And it, it's Alabama, we have what's called a business privilege tax. So before you even start making money, they would want you to pay them to have the privilege to do business in the state of Alabama. Ain't that crazy? This time. Sure. <laughs> I got to pay you to start a business. Like, hey, that's crap. I'm telling you, honey, they're going to get their money one way or another, one way or another, before you even make a profit, child. I ain't even sold nothing yet, but I got to give y'all $200. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> no problem. Okay, well, I mean, yeah. that's good. So let's talk about more. Like, so I know you said you were doing a shootique, right? So private labeling. So what is private labeling? Because I don't think a lot of people know what that is. Okay, um, private labeling is where there the product is already created and you um, get in touch with the manufacturer to add your logo and your brand to the product. And then it's your product. So it's just adding your private, your private brand or logo to a product that's already created. And that's what a lot of big companies already do um, that we don't even know it. Like the Fashion Nova, they just go to mm -hmm. these manufacturers that already created designs and add their logo to the name label tag or the front, whatever part of the, the product, whatever the product is, you just add your logo to it and then it becomes yours. It's your brand now. So, but this is now, but will they then sell that to another business as well? Because You've now put your logo on it and you're selling it as yours. But then let's yeah. say, you know, it was shoes. I buy a shoe and I don't put my, and, but then can another company then come in and say, oh, I like that shoe. Put my brand and my logo and everything on there too. They'll have, okay. So like, for instance, one of my clients is doing shoes and, um, wait, let me get that off my screen. It's doing shoes and she picked out the patterns, the fabric, everything. And they won't resell her style. Okay. But they resell her design. They're not supposed to resell to her design. But again, you, you have to like do like some non disclosures or something like that um, to keep them from selling your design. But they will sell the same type of style. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. And before we go any further, everybody, Kiwana offers consultations. Like she will counsel oh. you you know, help you through the process. This is why you keep hearing her say, my clients, my clients, my clients. People trust her and her word is real. She knows what she's doing. So like I said, make sure you go follow her, get her jewels, get her jewels. I'm telling you that it's real. But then if you want to start a business, become a client of hers. She is the real uh -huh. deal. She will help you. I promise you. Like she will help you as much as you want to be helped. But you got yeah. to be, please, please, let me tell you. Don't waste her time. <laughs> Look at me. I'm talking to y'all like y'all my kids. I got my finger point. Don't waste her time. She is Please. willing to help you if you are willing to be helped, honey. Now, I do want to ask you, do you just do clothes and shoes? or What about people? I get a lot of people that want to start candle businesses and makeup lines and stuff like that. Can you help people with that? 
with, with makeup lines. I've never done candles. Not saying that I can't do it, but I have never done it. So if I get somebody that want to do candles, it'll be the first person, and I won't charge them the same price as I would somebody that I have those. Allow me to get the experience first right. before I just did doing candles and stuff like that but makeup shoes um fashion i got i got that all day long oh see and that's what i'm talking honey listen bunch of women into makeup shoes and fashion <laughs> that's me <laughs> all day like i actually need to sign up to be one of your again i don't know everything about everything and i don't never act like i do i just you know sometimes I don't know everything about it, but I know a lot about a little. But I really need to sign up to be one of your clients because I need somebody like you to be like, because listen, I'm telling you, I am at the point with uh, getting these clothes for this boutique where I'm like, I'm sick of this. Like, I'm really, I'm getting, I'm, you know what? And this is a downfall of mine, and I've been able to admit it. I'm like, I just want to go on the website, see stuff, bad, put it in there, boom, we done. But nothing great is done that way. So okay. I'm like, I got to, you know, be patient. And then two, I have a nine to five. Okay. So it's like, then I come home and I'm doing this. Plus, I'm going to continue to help all the small business owners that reach out to me. So I'm doing that as well. So honestly, my boutique is falling by the wayside. Not on purpose. It's just because I want to yeah. help so many people make their stuff great. That I'm kind yeah. of falling back on my own, but I don't want to fall no, back on the, I don't want to fall back on them. I don't want to do that because so many of them yeah. trust me and my help. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm like, yeah. I know, like my boutique was supposed to launch on Monday. It's not going to happen. It's not going to uh, happen. No, it's not going to happen. I probably, uh, I, I've gotten a couple of deliveries of the stuff that I have, but, or that I wanted. And then when I looked at it, I'm like, I don't even want this. I don't like this. I'm that really? person. I, I'm horrible. Oh, baby, I'm horrible. Would your customer like it though? They probably would. <laughs> they, I, you know what? They probably would. And now that you say you need to buy what your customer would like, not what you yeah. would like, yeah. and I'm like, okay, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Okay, it ain't yeah. about me. It's about the women that I want to serve and the women that I want to help, the plus size beauties that I want to dress. So I'm like, they would probably love it. But I'm yes. looking at it like but then in the same in the same breath, shouldn't you like the, the items that you're selling though? Even though I'm I, not selling them to myself, shouldn't I shouldn't I like them too? Yeah, but I okay, so I wouldn't buy something that I didn't like. I'll just say I would not buy something that I did not like. That's that's just period. But yes, but again, once you identify who your customer is, your customer might be completely a completely opposite um avatar or an image of who you are. So they might like they might like I don't know, something that you wouldn't necessarily wear, but that's how, that is where it comes into the importance of identifying them before you even pick products, because once you start identifying them, and you can tell that this person is my ideal customer, but we have a different sense of style, mm -hmm. but I know if I get this, once I see this on the website, my ideal customer would like this, even if I wouldn't wear it. Right. So it's, it changes the dynamics of how you would purchase your product. Okay. And, and now that makes perfect sense. Because I think I was going into it with the, I'm going to buy what I like. Because if I like it, then I know they'll like it. Like, everybody likes what I like. No, ma'am. That's not how this works. So, but that makes True. perfect, perfect sense. Um, I see 111. Her name is Kiwana East Eaton. And it's K-E-I-W-A-N-A-E-A-T-O-N. Please go follow her. DM her so you can sign up with her. She is awesome sauce. Nicole Designs, is she a marketer? Now, do you do marketing at all? Like, do you help people with marketing? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to school for digital marketing and I just graduated. I do, I haven't, um, I will help you strategize a plan, but I won't do the marketing for them. Like, I will help you and show you how to do a Facebook ad, but I won't run the Facebook ad for you. For you. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I can do digital marketing. I just don't want to, I don't want to be a, um, what's it called? A done for you, a done for you agency. I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. Where somebody's doing it for you and you just paying out your money to get it done. Yeah. Perfect sense. Yeah. Perfect I'll, sense. Oh, you have, you have to do it though. Yeah. Um, Nina True 8, her name is Kiwana, K-E-I-W-A-N-A, Eaton, E-A-T-O-N. 
Ebony wants to know the shoe vendor's name. And let me, I can't pronounce it. Y'all know the vendors on Alibaba have them long, the companies have them long names. So there's no way that I can pronounce it. But I will, if you send me a, a DM, Ebony, um, to remind me, I will type it in the DM to you, but I can't <laughs> pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, if you all have uh -huh. any questions, please drop them down. I'm telling you. Okay. And if you are looking to start again, if I know I've said it several times, but I'm going to keep saying it till y'all believe me. If you are looking to start a business, she is the person to work with. I Even if you have a business, she is um, the person to work with. I'm telling you, she is going to steer you in the right direction. So please, please, please. So now let me ask you this, because I know a lot of businesses now that I'm starting to notice are getting into having brand ambassadors. I myself am a brand ambassador for four different businesses which I love. I, I, honestly, I never thought I would like it. Like, you wouldn't believe it, but I'm just a little shy. You wouldn't believe it, though. Like, nobody will believe it. Just a little bit. But Me how too. do you feel? Yeah, no, yeah, most people don't. <laughs> most people, just a little bit, though. But once I open up, though, once I open up, we there. But how do you feel about brand ambassadors? Do you think that's a good idea for businesses? Or when should a business decide to start working with brand ambassadors? I think it's a great idea, especially if it's only if and especially if um, it's a perfect fit between the both of y'all. Because once you develop a brand ambassador program, you got to make sure that they are marketing your business in the way that is conducive to the growth of your business mm -hmm. and in the life of your brand. Because if they start just posting all kind of craziness on social media about your brand or not using your brand colors in their their designs or whatever or however they're doing it then that causes a conflict so it's my be mindful of how you construct your brand ambassadorship program and okay. how you vet each person that you submit uh, that submits an application because you don't want to just you don't want any old person to do a to do to um to be your ambassador so i right. think it's great not to start off with one if you can if you can offer them some discounts or whatever um, and set up a, like a payment system via PayPal or however you set up a payment system for them, then I think that's great to start off with it. Take some of the work off of you and then you get to use some of their, their platforms and you get user-generated content. That's It's all pluses as, if, as long as it's a um, good fit. Okay. Well, I do have another question for you. So Nicole True 8 wants to know, like holistic products, like incense, crystals, things like that. Do you know of any vendors that offer stuff like that? No, I, I've seen it on, I haven't, actually, it ended today. There's a um, a beauty and spa trade show that happens at least twice a year called We Cosmo Proof. We, W-E, Cosmo Proof, P-R-O-F. Um, and they have spa products. They got the equipment. They got the, the, the creams. They got... They got everything that you can think of for that you would need to even if you just if, if you had a brick and mortar and you needed equipment, they got it. They got everything. But you get a chance to sit down with the um, manufacturer or the vendor face to face or be a video just like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And they'll show you their products, they'll show you their factory, they show you everything about what you need. But it ended today. Mm -hmm. Um so Google We Cosmo Proof and sign up for the next one and you will find all the products that you need. Oh wow! Okay, cool. You have any questions on your end? Yeah. Um. Uh huh. Oh, closet curves made a good point. She says also some require sales to prove how much money you spend on invoices, and this is very true. Um, some vendors, even like uh, LA showrooms, in order to be approved for an account on LA LA, LA showrooms and sites like Orange, um, I'm sorry, FashionGo.net, you have to give them a copy of two invoices. Um, to show that you have had proof of sales or either proof of business, um, proof of buying power before they'll even work with you. Mm. So that's, that's that's a good, um, I'm glad you said that. Now, fashiongo.net. Now, I'm, that's one of the ones I'm on. Um, okay. Are they all, those aren't all U.S.-based sellers, though, are they? Or are they wholesalers? I don't think so. Okay. I didn't think so either, but I'm like, hmm. Cause they do some of those vendors want a lot. Yeah, um, I'm trying to go through all of these. Huh? Oh, she said half the time Fashion Nova don't even have a label. That's crazy. That means they buy. They don't. Yeah. From the they're not. I, I mean, they're not kidding. Half the time they don't have a label in it. They really don't. 
Wow, that, that means they buy it just like you can go buy it. They buy it in bulk and just sell it. Yeah. And it's cheaper that way. It's cheaper that way. That's crazy. So if they doing it that way, they probably spending five below five dollars per unit. Per unit. Per, per unit on their clothing. Um society complex asks, how does he get a consultation? and J J J S Tribe asked the same question. Um, go to the link in my bio. Once we, if y'all have friended me, go to the link in my bio and then just apply for consultation. Um, I make sure that we are a good fit. Like, of course, that I want to be a good fit for you and I want you to be a good fit for me. Um, so I have to go through the application to make sure that we're a good fit and then I'll approve it and respond back to you via email with the scheduling link. Um, and then we, we meet up on video. So Nina True 8 asked, is there a platform of black vendors that I know of or that you know of? Now, I know of a um, app and it is only black vendors. And it's, um, I can't, I can never pronounce it, but I'm going to spell it for you. And it's M-I-I-R-I-Y-A. There is nothing but black owned businesses, be it beauty products, clothing, shoes, art, whatever. These are all black owned businesses that you can go to and purchase directly from the app. And these are businesses that have signed up to be on that app. And if you actually have a small business, I think the last time I checked, it was a dollar to join that app for your business to be listed. Now, that could have changed because it's been a couple of months. So that may have changed, but the last time it was only a dollar and that was literally just to help her keep up with, you know, whatever is required to keep an app going because I have no idea what is required. So, but yes, again, the app is spelled M like Mary, I-I-R-I-Y-A. Download it on Android and Apple. You can download it on any kind of, or iPhone, not Apple child, iPhones, and the app is there. Um, and I then have. let's see, Shane, Kia Rivers. Yes. Um, if you go to the link in my bio, click the link, it'll be uploaded on my YouTube, probably about 15 minutes after this live is over. This replay will be available for all the information you need. Miss Mildred asks, where should I, where would I look for kids clothing vendors, please? Um, I have a link in my bio for vendors and I have one, one tab for kids clothing. It's about six vendors on there. Yeah, and the Kiwana also offers a uh, vendors list. Ven is it what is it? Five dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and it ha I bought it by the way. It has, <laughs> it has you know a lot of good vendors on there, and it's a few pages. Like it ain't about you know ten, fifteen vendors. No ma'am, no ham. It is some very nice. You know, this, this is a pretty long list for five dollars. So you know, if you are uh, looking for vendors, and I'm sure are these vendors that you vetted or you just know that they're good vendors or they're just, you know, vendors that you've heard of or No, I don't go by hearsay with no vendors at all. Um, those are ones that I have either worked with myself or ones that I've vetted. Especially with the ultimate the ultimate list. The ultimate list is all US based vendors. It has about a hundred and six of them on there. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, if you again Go, go, go friend her, click her link in her bio, get that vendors list, child, get that consultation going. Now, listen, we, we try to listen. They don't, on this good Juneteenth Father's Day weekend, listen, we trying to give y'all some jewels, honey. Y'all got to pick up these jewels because I'm telling yes. you, but you know, like I said, she is amazing at what she does. She helps people. She's helping me or she will be. So, <laughs> you know, definitely. So please. So you got any more questions on your end? Uh, text messages. <laughs> she said, friend, I'm here. <laughs> um, somebody says, ask what is a good way to keep up with invoices? Um, I can't find that question to say your name. So hopefully you're still here. Um, but if it's I used to just keep invoices. Um the only time I use invoices, well, I use um WordPress. When I was doing e-commerce, well, having a boutique, I used WordPress. And in, on the back end, um, the admin accounts, the admin corner, it has all the, the invoices that you have ever sent or created anyway. So that's where I just keep up with the invoices. That PayPal keep up with the invoices inside of PayPal too. Like whatever you're using should be also keeping up with the invoices. 
Nina True A. Oh, how do I send a donation to? I don't understand this recharge. What recharge that child? I don't know. <laughs> What's I have no idea what that. As an example, it depends on the type of product that you're doing. I would I would bet a few vendors first or a few manufacturers first to see who has the best quality, the best prices, the best shipping, and all that first before I start even doing um, business with them. Once you find one that does something that you like, then good. A, a product that you like, then okay, like hair care and makeup. Okay, so um, it just depends on what your budget is because doing private label costs a lot more than it does just buying things wholesale because the, the MOQ is higher. So budget yourself. That The budget is going to come into play, number one. And then um, depending, well, with hair care and makeup, I don't think it's seasonal. Well, I don't know if hair care is seasonal or not. Is, is it? I don't think it is. Not like fashion. Um, yeah, that don't. Mm. I don't think it is. I don't like, see why like, how it would be. Yeah, not like fashion, but um, just bet your vendor, and it goes by your budget. If you can get, if you can get all your your whole line of stuff started, probably I mean being manufactured at one time, then do that. But I will recommend that if you get your product being manufactured, then also go ahead and get your packaging manufactured at the same time as your product, because it takes it takes them some lead time for production to make your product and your packaging let's see lakia lakia creations or lake i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing it wrong lakia or lakia creations the vendors list is at kiwana eaton it's on her page you would have to uh friend her or follow her and then go to the link in her bio and her uh, name is spelled k-e-i-w-a-n-a-e-a-t-o-n that's all together just type all that in, and it'll be a beautiful young lady with a green background, and that's how that's how you'll get the vendors list. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. I'll be seeing how you be helping people, and you awesome yourself. I hope you give yourself credit. Listen, I, I, I love helping people. I do. I really, really do. I enjoy, I just like helping people. Like, I mean, it's, it's like a human nature thing of mine which is so far outside of what people believe about me. <laughs> but I really, yeah, like people, I mean, a lot of people, when they meet me, they think I'm mean, they think I'm oh. rude. And I'm like, I am so far from that. But now, just like every other person, I got buttons, you push them, <laughs> exactly. then Bound you're going to get what you get. And then I'm very, very passionate about things. Kids are one, you know, for a lot of people that don't know, I don't want to make this about that, but I'm a domestic violence survivor. So when it comes to domestic violence and, you know, those survivors and those victims, I am very, very passionate about that. But, you know, I mean, I just, I really do truly love helping people. Like I just, I, I just like doing it. And then I, you know, people tell me all the time, you got this personality that people just gravitate to. And I'm like, why? Like, why y'all like me? Like, <laughs> But I mean, I just I just love helping people. And I mean, somebody like you that I know likes, loves helping people as well. Come on now. Yeah. We can't do nothing but drop these jewels on people and, you know, help them out to the yeah. best of our ability. And like I said, when I don't know something, ever since I figured out what you do, I'm like, listen, go talk to her. Reach out to her. She can help you, you know, and especially when it comes to what do I need to do to start a business? I don't know where to start. Everybody starts in a different spot. But like you said, create that vision, figure out yeah. what it is you want to do. And then you go from there. But from here on out, I'm like, listen, follow at Kiwana. So, baby, you probably gonna get a lot of tags and mentions from me because I'm like, follow Kiwana. She is awesome do you hear me and is willing to help you and that's what i love about you you listen now don't come for her about the spelling of stuff let's make this <laughs> real clear for y'all there don't come for her about how a vendor's name is spelled baby because she will put you on blast and me being who i am i'm gonna co-sign said blast okay <laughs> Don't come for okay. her, because she will tell you, like, that is not how it's spelled. Kick rocks. <laughs> like, <laughs> the professionalism yeah. goes out the She'll cold switch on you in a minute, sis, like, real quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, yeah. don't play with her. So, do you have any more questions on your end? 
Uh huh. Ebony asks, can someone purchase clothing from? I'm not sure if that. I don't think that's supposed to be Alpha Border, but maybe a manufacturer and put their own label on after tearaway tag off. Um, I think you at what I'm interpreting is, can you buy the clothes from the manufacturer and with their label on and then tear it off, tear the tag off and put your label on it? Is if that's what you're asking me, I don't know if there's any legalities in that or not. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that part. Oh, Ash, Ashley Cardi, how do you, oh, this is about Taylor Brands. Okay, how do you run ads on Taylor Brands? Okay, so Taylor Brands is not something you run ads on. Taylor Brands is like a Shopify, so where they hold your website, they hold your domain, you know, they create, help you create a business email. But running ads, they don't do that. That That's not something that you can do on Taylor Brands. So if you have any questions about Taylor Brands, inbox me. I will be more than happy to answer any of those questions. I mean, you can ask right now. It makes no difference. But, you know, you can also um, inbox me if you would like to. And I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have about Taylor Brands. I had never heard of Taylor Brands until I seen your sponsor ad. So I had um, one a girl the other day that told me that she had got Taylor Brands because of your ad. And also, I was recommending somebody that was trying to stop paying for, um, she had been paying for Shopify, but wasn't using it, just paying for it. And so I'm going to send her towards your way, too. Yeah, and I mean, one and one thing I'll say about, and again, I don't want to make this about Taylor Brands, but one thing I'll say, the difference that I like better than Shopify mm -hmm. is, number one, yeah, I, I, you pay for it yearly. So okay. I pay for it, I pay for it for the year. I'm not paying them $30 a month. I'm not paying them $50, $60 a month. Because if I didn't make that, but I still got to pay it, I ain't got it, which means my website is going to get shut down. No, with Taylor Brands, you pay for the full year. Or it's either one year or two years you can pay for. I paid for a full year. So even mm. if I decide not to do anything on my website, they helped me create the logo. They create well. I created the logo on their website. I created the website. They helped me to do that. They have professionals that will help you create the website, you know. And you can do e-commerce on there. So, I mean, I I don't I don't want to bash the other companies. I don't want to do that because all companies have their goods and their bads. I don't care what company it is. Taylor Brands was best for me for what I wanted and how I wanted my business to look. And the fact of the matter is that I am not paying every month. So if I don't make no sales for three months, my website's not going to get shut down. It's still going to be up for those three months because I paid them for the year. So that's something I, I personally prefer over the other guys. I agree with that. That's what, that's, a, that's a good point. Cause who want to keep paying them thirty dollars or however much? I mean, Everyone, and with what's... them, you know, because a lot of people say, "Oh, will that give you a free reader, a card reader?" Uh, it ain't free. I promise you, that card reader is not free. That thirty dollars a month, and they give you three different options. So it's like thirty dollars, then it's like a hundred and something dollars, and it's like three hundred dollars. So you have like different tiers, like most companies do. But, you know, it's like, but you're paying that $30 a month, plus you're paying your transaction fees. Now, don't get me wrong. All companies, PayPal charges you a transaction fee. Square charges you, they're going to charge you a transaction fee. But you ain't struggling to pay all that on top mm -hmm. of pay this $30 a month. And then if you can't pay it all, they will they don't shut down your website. So Taylor Brands don't has nothing to do with how your payments are processed. So you're paying your transaction fee to PayPal, to MasterCard, to Visa, to whomever. You're not paying them to Taylor Brands. They don't they don't make a dollar off of your transaction fees. The only thing mm. they get paid for doing is just your website, your domain, and your email, your and your um, branded merchandise. So like your business cards, your thank you cards. You know, if you wanted to create a hat with your business logo on it, you know, coffee cups, t-shirts, all that other good stuff. That's what they do. So, yeah, they might not have all these apps that are attached, but on the flip side, they offer this these other services. Nina True, it's spelled T-A-I-L-O-R. Brands, you have correct. Yes, and it's all one word. But, yes, yeah, so. 
um, beautiful adornments 10 says, hello, I do need help with Taylor Brand. She's the pro at it. So follow her. Follow her and then inbox her. And then Precious Davis says, when should I be ready to launch? Um, I say after you created your vision, identified your ideal customer, set your budget for your inventory, picked out some inventory, and got your website together, launch. Launch. Yes, ma'am. Put it out there. Take some bomb photo. And one thing I've noticed about, especially with boutiques, shootiques, stuff like that, take photos of you in the products. Take photos yes. of real life people in these products. I don't want to see a stock photo. Stock photos wear me out. Like they, yeah. because that is an unrealistic view, airbrushed view of that item. See, a lot of people buy clothes based on what they look like on the model. Forgetting, I'm not built like her that don't she ain't built like her. So those stock photos are very misleading. So when you're going to do that, especially you, you have to take photos of normal people, your friends, your daughters. Like when I do mine, I was thinking about having clothes for non plus size women. So my daughter was is going to be the model for those clothes. I'll be the model for the plus size clothing, you know, so. Those stop, stop putting up stock photos, y'all. It's like stock photos are misleading. Yeah. Especially if them photos come from the, the manufacturer. Half of them be created via Photoshop and just the colors done change. Um, Nikki Enterprises says, would you recommend Taylor Brands over GoDaddy? Um, I've never used Taylor Brands, but I do know that Go, GoDaddy has a subscription just the way that the other guys have. So if the selling point for Taylor Brands, to me, is that you can buy for a year, I would definitely go with them. I mean, I definitely, with Taylor Brands, I want people to do their research. Please, do, don't do it because you see me on there and I'm, I'm, I did an ad for them. I did. I've done several ads for them. But I want you to do your research because I want to make sure, like how you say with people you work with, they have to be a good fit for you. Because if they're not, nothing they do is going to be good enough. So definitely right. do your, and if you have questions, please reach out to me and ask, and I will help you to the best of my ability. If I can't, I will reach out to my direct contacts at Taylor. I am a brand ambassador for Taylor Brands. I will reach out to my direct contacts and say, hey, bro, this ain't working. I need you to get this together, and they will fix it for me. And I also, I want people to understand, because this is a question I get a lot about them. Are they black owned? They are not. There is not a black owned company that offers anything that Taylor Brand, Shopify, GoDaddy, Wix, any of those. There is not a black owned company that does that. But Taylor Brands is minority owned. I'm, so after black owned comes minority owned in my book. I'm there. So that's why I chose to work with this company. Maybe that's a, um, a good area of opportunity for somebody on the live to create something like that. Um, yes. And then another thing about um, like some of the U.S. based vendors, and I'm glad you you talked about that app with the uh, with black owned business owners mm -hmm. on the app. From the like, I do I go to some of the trade shows, the U.S. based trade shows like Magic and um, We Cosmo Proof and all of that stuff. But there are hardly any black wholesalers there. And even then, when they're not black wholesalers there, they barely have any black models trying on their clothes. So. We have a lot of area of opportunities to yes. get into. Yes, yes. And we have to support one another. My platform has been built on uplifting Black-owned businesses. And I stand on that platform for a reason. Because, I'm, unfortunately, they get such a short end of the stick. You know, one person has one bad experience with a Black-owned business. And I'm talking about they will drag y'all. But if they go to Walmart and have a bad experience, they might drag Walmart, but I promise you they're going back. They're going to go yep. back. And drag it's like, I, you got to make that make sense to me. It don't make sense. You are dragging this all black owned businesses based off of one experience with one business and not all black owned business owners are like that. I, every business owner I've dealt with thus far, and I've probably dealt with about 30 of them, have been nothing but professional. Nothing but mm. So we, we really need to get rid of that stigma that all black owned businesses or black business owners are unprofessional. They're not. They're really not. Yep. You're going to yep. find unprofessionalism 
in any business. I don't care wh or whoever owns it. I don't care what it is. But we always seem to get the short end of the stick on that. So I just wanted to say that I'm going to get off my soapbox now. You got any <laughs> questions on your end? <laughs> Precious Davis asks, what's the name of that um, the black owned app again? It's, uh I, again, I can't, I can't say it, child. I'm going to spell it for you. It's uh, M-I-I-R-I-Y-A. Yeah, because I can I cannot pronounce it for the life of me. Let's see, did I have any questions? I don't think I did. So I know you had talked a, a, a little bit about like Facebook and IG ads. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of them. But what is your take on them? Um, well, I've never ran an ad on IG, but I have ran an ad on Facebook, and it worked. It worked for me. Um, it's just knowing who you're. It's, it's mostly about knowing who your audience is, who your target audience is, and getting in front of them. Like, and not having such a broad audience that you're trying to reach everybody. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to reach everybody, then you haven't identified who your ideal customer is. You need to get right in front of the person that you're trying to get into. And that comes with knowing what their interests are, where they will be hanging at, what type of people they follow, stuff like that. So if you know who your who your customer is, it'll work for you. Okay. Okay. But I know And I've never run an ad. Ad I did run an ad on uh, Facebook before, and it it helped, but it didn't do what I thought it would do. But I'm sorry, but what's your oh, guess yeah. information? Okay, her name again is Kiwana Eaton, and it's K E I W A N A E A T O N, all one word, all together. Um. Somebody says they can't find, oh, I Am Prosperity says, I'm looking for Taylor Brand price and I can't find a what's the price. The price so one. Taylor Brands, the way that they work, it's a scale. All companies have their scale. So depending on what you want, the services can start from $3.20 a month up to $50. And when I say a month, that means that $3.20 is times 12. So you would do that price times 12 because you're going to be paying yearly not monthly um mm -hmm. so like i said if you want just a logo you can do just a logo pay them ten dollars boom you're out the door the logo belongs to you it does not belong to anybody else if you want them to do a logo in a website okay that's where you get up into the maybe 15 20 25 you know like i said it's a scale um, the one thing I really love about them is that you can go through all the motions. You can go through the motion of creating a logo, pretending as if you are going to set up a website, all this stuff. And it'll tell you at the very end how much that is going to cost you right then and there. And then if you choose to buy it, you can use a code that they have given to me to give to customers which is Angie 25, it's A-N-J-I and a number 25 all together, and you get 25% off of the price that they're showing you. So, and I, and, I, and I do get, I do get a portion. I will admit this, I get a portion of that, but I still would pay, I still want that 25% off, whether or not, you know what I mean? Like whether or not somebody got a portion or not, but you're paying, like right. I said, it's for the year. So, you know, again, with, the other guys, you're paying monthly, and if you miss a payment, your website gets shut down. Your your website's up for a full year, whether you're doing anything with it or not. So, and you don't have to worry about paying those monthly fees. So, I that's why it's it's the best thing for me. Can you say the startup list again? Vision, target, customer, set budget. That that is it right there. You got it. Nina, so she wants to know, like, what should you do to get your ducks in a row? Get your vision, yep. find your target audience or your target customer, set your budget, start purchasing, get your website, take real life photos, launch. Yeah, that's it right yep. there. Yeah, and while you're waiting on your products, yes, it's Andy 25, um, A N J I 25. You're spelling it right, yeah. Um, when you are waiting on your products, start building your your uh momentum up mm -hmm. like on social media, start letting people know what's going on what's just gonna happen to like start building up anticipation 
create your business social media pages. Like she said, and start, listen, these people that do these videos of their inventory coming in and they showing you sneak peeks and everything. I love that. That is because it does. It builds up anticipation. Like I myself was actually going to make a video of I created my own um, personal packaging. So I was going to create a video on my business page showing the personal packaging and stickers and tape that I created. But I'm like, this is more important. I do that tomorrow. So <laughs> somebody said we froze. Are we still froze? Are we frozen? Are, are we? Fr hey, everybody that's on my live. Am I frozen or can y'all hear us? They'll let us know when it's oh they're saying I'm, we're not frozen on my end on over here. Okay, so maybe what it was just that person's connection. Okay, or well, they saying no. Okay. Um, how many should I start with at the beginning? If you're asking how much um, inventory should you start with, um, oh she says she's on both. She's it's probably. Oh, okay. Uh, there could be a delay of some sort. I, I know that's right, yeah. girl. Be on both, honey. That's <laughs> important <laughs> right there, ain't it? I love it. Um, Who is that that's on both? <laughs> that is Precious Davis, 27. I know that's right. That's right, child. Be on both of them. Um, Beautiful Adornment says, how many should you start with at the beginning? Um, I would start with I would start with the bare minimum order, depending on your budget, um, and then see what happens. See what happens from there. It's better to start with, well, to me, you don't want to over overspend or um, overbuy because mm -hmm. depending on the season too, especially with fashion, fashion goes, you know, fashion goes by season. So if you got if you buy a whole lot of inventory of summer stuff and we're getting ready to go into the winter season, then you're going to be sitting on inventory, which is losing money. And then um, you either put it on sale or you'll be holding it until next year. But if you hold it to next year, fashion trends change. change. Yes. So yes. It changes. Yes. So let's, talk, so let's say that. So items. So let's say, should they start with maybe just find 10 nice items you like and boom. Or, you know, seven and boom and start there, you know, like, or should they, you know, how should, is that the recommendation? I started with, with my shoe company. I started with 20, 20 different styles. Mm -hmm. um, I, that was like uh, close to $5,000 to spend. So that's where I started with. Um, and it was all summer stuff and we built up a lot of anticipation. So for shoes that had sold out really fast, all we did was contacted the supplier to let them know that we was going to order again and then we put it on pre-sale so that people can start buying again so if if you run out if you order less than what you need and you run out that's an opportunity for pre-sales okay and do you like the pre-orders and the pre-sale do you recommend those with do you recommend because I, I know a lot of people start out with pre-sales and i'm like uh i don't think that's a yeah. good idea but i know pre-selling is good especially for something that's sold out so fast yeah, yeah, in that in in the latter situation, yes, but I don't like starting out with pre-sales because you don't even know the quality of your inventory. Yet. Right. That's my only thing, and that's also my thing with um with drop shipping too. Unless you can know the quality of the product, I would not. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. And okay. So let's talk about drop shipping because a lot of people like to do drop, especially with like t-shirts and stuff like that. A lot of people like to do drop shipping, which I get it. You have no inventory. You ain't got to worry about it. The order come in. The company prints it. They send it yeah. with your, your uh, brand on it. You good. So drop shipping is good. But is yeah. it good for, like you said, with the quality of the items? Like you would have to know the quality of yeah. those items because you would hate for a customer to get an item and it's a drop ship item. You have no idea what that quality is. And they got this jacked up T-shirt or, you know, usually most people do drop shipping with T-shirts and then boom. Yeah. It's, now, do you know of any like boutique vendors that do drop shipping? I came across, um, well, only for shoes. I don't know any with clothing. Um, I know Cape Robin does, just has a new drop shipping program, but it costs like $99. See, I don't know mm. if you're supposed to pay a uh, fee 
in order to do drop shipping. I had never seen that before. Um, but I've only seen it drop shipping with accessories and with AliExpress, but then you need to order samples and stuff first. Um, anytime you're dealing with overseas vendors, I would definitely order a sample first mm -hmm. before I even from a drop shipping company in the US, I would still order a sample first. Um, if they have it, if they offer it before I before I start doing drop shipping. Okay. I hope y'all writing down these jewels. <laughs> y'all getting these nuggets and these pearls of wisdom, child. Yes, experience. So y'all don't have to make the same mistakes that we done made or I done made. So I done I made them too. Different. Trust me. I have made them. I made them the first go round. So I refuse to make them the second go round. I'm not going to do that this second time. My kids have been asking me for the longest. Mama, when you going to start the boutique back up? Leave me alone about that ding dang <laughs> boutique. And then I just said, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's do it. So, but yes, okay. please make sure y'all writing down these these pearls and follow Kiwana. Please follow, 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 follow. Oh. Reach out for a consultation if you need it. There's nothing wrong. Even if you are already a business owner, you can learn more. You do not. There's no business owner that knows everything. Right. Like, I'm still a student. I always enroll in a course. If it's something that I'm lacking on, I'll take a course in a minute. Like, yes, there's nothing wrong with continually wanting to learn to better yourself, to better your business, and to better your brand. Like, I can only yes. offer so much. She can only offer so much. But at the end of mm -hmm. the day, you have to be willing to want to accept the knowledge and then keep learning even after you, you're, yes. you know, you've gotten what you need from us, too. So, yeah. Society is always changing, so business will still change. Yeah. Nobody for COVID to happen and e-commerce to start booming like it did. So it's things is just always changing. So you just right. gotta keep learning. Exactly. Exactly. I don't got any more questions on this side. I don't either. So I mean, you know what? I feel like this was amazing for me. I, like I'm fan girling. Like I am a fan of yours. Like you are now my sister, you are now my family. Like this is this is the oh, I love it. I appreciate you so much for taking the time out to talk to me, to talk to my family members. I love talking to your family members. Like this is we gonna this is something we gonna have to do, probably maybe once a month. We gonna have to figure this out. But you and I gonna yeah. make this a a, a a normal for people. Like I feel like this is something people need. They they want. So we are gonna be the ones to give it to them. So I, I agree, and I concur. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Somebody already asked when's the next live. <laughs> <laughs> we got to schedule it first, y'all. <laughs> and like yeah. I said, if you missed anything on here that you didn't, you know, you didn't get to see, I will be posting this on my YouTube. Dot right, like literally right after this. It takes a minute for the replay to be available for me to download and then upload to my YouTube. So go to my page, which is curvy queen underscore Angie. Um, oh, yo, yo, you it's okay. It's spelled crazy, y'all. So I'm gonna spell it for y'all for those of y'all that are on Kiwana side and you you don't you can't see anything. Just it's a K U R V Y K W E E N underscore A N J I. Go follow me, click the YouTube link, and this will be up on YouTube. Subscribe, follow me on YouTube, and this will be up on YouTube. Um, I also do product reviews. So those reviews, I'm doing my next one with the Dollhouse Collection on Sunday. I am so excited for that one at 4 p.m. Eastern. So um, the, all of my lives will be up on YouTube every time. So this one will be up there. If you missed anything, anything, and you have any questions, reach out to myself or Kiwana, or if you watch the, the live and you say, wait, this question wasn't answered, reach out to one of us and we will give you an answer. I promise you, yeah. we will. Definitely. But make sure my followers and my family members, I hate calling y'all followers, go follow her, ding dang it. Follow her. <laughs> <laughs> reach out to her. She is wonderful and so sweet and so willing to help. So, so willing yep. to help. So, um, Dave is spelled you spell where you have the C at in her name, it's a V. Yes, please follow me, reach out to me, whatever y'all want. I am here to help. And what I don't know, I'll just reach out to Kiwana and ask her. 
<laughs> Likewise. <too. laughs> so, yes. So, but I really appreciate you taking this time. Thank you so much. You, uh, you are amazing. You really are. Like, I met you at the right time. I promise you that. I met you at the absolute right. When it was supposed to happen, it happened. And I appreciate oh. you for taking the time. We're going to have to coordinate another live because apparently this is something that the people want. So we got to give the yeah. people what they're looking for. So we are going to coordinate another live. And just like before, we'll post our videos to let y'all know when that next live. It won't be till next month. Now, don't wait for it next week. And I know it'll be next month sometime. But, yeah, <laughs> I I just appreciate you both. I, oh, you both. You. And I appreciate you. The you information, I mean, child, what you giving ain't, what I'm giving can't compare to what you giving. I promise you. Like, Hello. like, yes, we have, was a little bit of time for you to say hi to the first time I have. Okay. I, I don't, okay. But no, I appreciate everything that you are doing, all the work you are doing, all the people you are helping. You are a sweetheart, and we love you so much. Thank you so, 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 so much. And we will let everybody know when that, when that next live is. All right? So I'm going to let Kiwana go, though. Go with now, y'all. So thank you. Love you so much. You are amazing. Everybody be a blessing to someone. Have a good evening. Bye, okay, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>